Now, this is a really interesting, quick story. And I'm so lucky to have two friends that live in Belgium. One is a mutual friend, Martine, and then I have another friend um, there too. And they, um, one of them brought to my attention this article about the Brussels Belgium Temple. And there are some stats on it. It was announced uh, in 2021. It's going to be one of those ones where they repurpose an existing building, as you can see there on the screen, and they're going to fit it into the community. There's no place they can build a standalone temple. It's gonna have a meeting house in it, I think a reception area. So it'll be maybe kind of like the Manhattan Temple where you're in a more urban area and you kind of build up, right? You got the temple on one floor, you got the meeting house. So anyway, exciting announcement. Everybody's absolutely thrilled. And then this very interesting article came out. This is by Alan Lallemand, and it is in the Gazette van Antwerp. And again, um, I couldn't read it, but I had friends that could. So this is great. So the article says the Mormon church purchased this property in 2021 and in the same year applied for a zoning change to a religious and cultural center. So same MO, as we know, we have to go in and apply to change the zone so you can put your religious building in. An environmental permit for conversion to a house of worship followed on June 25th of this year. This application was rejected. Did we ever hear anything about that? I don't think we ever did. I guess they don't really announce the nuts and bolts of what's happening with a temple when it's, you know, this is the back and forth, the legal back and forth. Um, it would not be in line with the regional zoning plan is what they said in Brussels. Uh, the Brussels environment confirms that the procedures and negotiations are continuing correctly in accordance with the regulations of the city of Brussels, said the spokesman for the church in Belgium. So just what I said, the church says, no, this is just fine. It's back and forth. It's, it's what normally happens. So an opening date has not been announced. So we don't know when it's going to be built. So now this is the part where it gets really interesting. The Mormon church itself claims to have 7,000 members in our country. The Observatory for Harmful Cults in Belgium, the IACSSO, calls that an overestimate. Oh, dear. The Observatory for, for what? <laughs> for Harmful Cults. It's a watchdog group that looks at organizations that are coming into the country and assesses whether they might meet the criteria of being considered something a little more harmful than just a religion. Hmm. So it's called the Observatory for harmful cults. Anyway, so they say this is an overestimate to say there are 7,000 members there. Journalist Alan Lamond, who wrote a book on cults in Belgium, rather estimates the number at around 4,200. And if we do the math on that, that tracks with everything that we track um, as far as the percentages and the overestimations. The IACSSO says it keeps a close eye on the faith community. Uh, polygamy. The organization renounced, but it still opposes abortion, contraception, and homosexuality. Church members also donate 10% of their total income. It is not known how much the investment in Brussels will cost. The Information and Advisory Center on Harmful Cultarian Organizations, Cultarian, I don't know what that is either, <laughs> um, is an independent center established at the FPS justice. What do you guys think of that? Yeah, we wouldn't say cultarian organizations. We would just say cults. Yes, I think that's what we would say. Exactly. So, so any fascinating, huh? I, I'm sure most of you weren't staying up at night wondering what was happening with the Belgium Brussels temple, but now we know. Looks like there's a watchdog group looking into it and they're working on getting the correct permits. So we'll see. When it when it comes to China, you know, sort of here at least stalling out for a moment. Sort of strange that our Father in Heaven would tell his prophet where to put a temple only to find out that the chain of events would be such that maybe such an idea could be thwarted. Um, you think no. the master of the universe would sort of know the end game? Yes. I don't know. You would maybe say, I have the power. The yeah. master of the universe might have known that the location that he designated for Heber Valley would require that millions of gallons a day of water are pumped out from the land underneath the temple. There's all kinds of things. And again, this goes back to what Laura Lee Hall keeps telling us. It used to be you would do that kind of due diligence in on the ground. You would choose a site. She herself was sent out to select all the sites. You look very carefully. You talk to the community. You understand what's happening. That's not what's happening now. 
You're just throwing out announcements. Remember the announcement about India? That just came into President Nelson's head on the, while he was standing at the stand and said, there's going to be a temple in India. <laughs> You haven't done any due diligence. And these are the kind of problems that you're going to run into. You're going to run into neighborhood pushback and it's just going to happen over and over. So 